Hello everyone, my name is Selena Jofield and today I will be presenting on the environmental and economical benefits of vegetarianism. So what is environmental vegetarianism? Environmental vegetarianism is the practice of vegetarianism when motivated by the desire to create a sustainable diet that avoids the negative environmental impact of meat production. Other than climate change, environmental concerns about the production of animal products may also relate to biodiversity loss, pollution, deforestation, unsustainability, and the use of water and land. God has clearly placed humans in a position of responsibility over his creation. Genesis 2.15 says, The Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Genesis chapter 1, verses 25 to 26 says, And God made the beasts of the field after his kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. We recognize that all created things belong to God and that we are accountable to him as stewards of his creation. God commissions us to rule over the creation in a way that sustains, protects, and enhances his works so that all creation may fulfill the purposes God intended for it. We must manage the environment, not simply for our own benefit, but for God's glory. Some may argue that humans are more important than the rest of the creation, so we should focus our efforts on meeting the needs of people rather than addressing environmental issues. However, many of our environmental problems negatively impact people. If we fail to care for the environment in which we live, God's people will suffer as a result. Caring for the non-human parts of the creation and preserving the intricate interactions among them is an important part of, seek of seeking justice for God's people. Others may argue that protecting the environment is unimportant in comparison to other God-given tasks such as sharing the gospel. But God is concerned with the physical rule as well as our spiritual lives, and restoration of the creation is part of the good news of Christ. We are not to neglect the task of sharing the good news of Christ's redeeming work in our lives, but neither should we neglect the work of tending the garden. Caring for God's creation is part of our service to God and an integral part of our role as servant leaders in God's kingdom. Numerous things that are done to protect God's creation, such as conserving energy and reducing waste, in no way interfere with our witness to unbelievers. Rather, they enhance our witness as others see us put our faith into action. Our concern for the environment may open up opportunities to share with unbelievers that our service to the creation overflows from our love for God, the Creator. We worship God the Creator more fully as we see in His glory in His creation and as we participate in His work of sustaining and restoring proper relationships within the creation. There was a time when vegetarian, vegan, and plant based diets in the Western world were part of a small subculture. It was considered the domain for certain religious groups and activists rather than large numbers of the population. 
Today, consumers have begun to realize the positive impact a plant-based diet has, not only on the health, but also many other aspects of life. So let's look through the environmental benefits of vegetarianism. The first one is that it avoids excess carbon dioxide production. According to the UN report, when emissions from land use and land use change are included, the livestock sector accounts for 9% of carbon dioxide deriving from human-related activities, but produces a much larger share of even more harmful greenhouse gases. Number two, it reduces methane slash nitrous oxide production. Cows and sheep are responsible for 37% of the total methane, which is 23 times as warming as carbon dioxide generated by human activity. With, mem with methane emissions causing nearly half of the planet's human-induced warming, methane reduction must be a priority. The livestock industry generates 64% of ammonia, which contributes significantly to acid rain. The livestock industry also generates 65% of human-related nitrous oxide, which has 300 times the global warming potential of carbon dioxide. Most of this comes from manual. A shift in diets can lower greenhouse gas emissions much more quickly than shifts away from the fossil fuel burning technologies that emit carbon dioxide. The turnover rate for cars and power plants, on the other hand, can be decades. Even if cheap zero emission fuel sources were available today, they would take many years to build and slowly replace the massive infrastructure our economy depends upon today. Number three, saves large amounts of water. Estimates of the water required to produce a kilo of beef vary from 13,000 liters up to 100,000 liters. The damage is plain when you consider that the water required to produce a kilo of wheat is somewhere between 1,000 to 2,000 liters. Number four, avoid further pollution of streams slash rivers slash oceans. Pollution of our waterways is caused by animal waste, antibiotics, and hormones entering the water cycle alongside chemicals from tanneries, fertilizers, and the pesticides used to spray feed crops. Manure or wastewater containing manure severely harms rivers and stream ecosystems. Farmed animals produce about 130 times as much as excrement as the entire human population of the United States. Since factory farms don't have sewage treatment systems, as our cities and towns do, this concentrated stuff ends up polluting our water, destroying our topsoil, and contaminating our air. Once factory farm pollutants, including nitrogen, phosphorus, antibiotics, and pesticides, reach the waterways, they can cause a great deal of damage to aquatic and human life. Number five, reduce use of antibiotics, growth hormones, and chemicals. Farm animals and fish are fed a wide variety of drugs to fatten them faster and to keep them alive in conditions that would otherwise kill them. These drugs enter the human food chain through direct consumption or through pollution of our waterways. The effect on humans of consuming low levels of these drugs during a lifetime is unknown, but could be serious. Antibiotics contain significant amounts of the most carcinogenic form of arsenic. USDA researchers have found that eating two ounces of chicken per day, the equivalent of a third to a half of a boneless breast, exposes a consumer to three to five micrograms of inorganic arsenic, the element's most toxic form. Daily exposure to low doses of arsenic can cause cancer, dementia, neurological problems, and other ailments in humans. 
Antibiotics reduce the number of bacteria in animals, intestines, and preventing infection to which crowded, stressed animals are predisposed. Routine antibiotic use leads to antibiotic resistant bacteria, thereby reducing antibiotics effectiveness when treating people suffering from food poisoning or other infectious diseases. Farmers give hormones to animals to increase growth and productivity. Widely used in the United States, these hormones are known to cause several types of cancer and reproductive dysfunction in humans. Number six, reduce destruction of wildlife habitats and endangered species. The livestock industry is responsible for widespread deforestation and cultivation of vast tracts of land. Widespread cultivation of the land ruins animals and natural habitats and forces millions of them to be evicted from their homes each year, causing long-term harm to our wildlife. Vegetarianism is good for the economy too. Not only there are environmental and humanitarian benefits to a plant-based agricultural system, but an economic benefit as well. The additional food that would be produced as a result of a shift to a vegetarian slash vegan diet in the US alone could feed 350 million additional people. The value of this food surplus would also offset the loss from the decrease in livestock production. Economic studies show that animal agriculture in a majority of Western economies accounts for less than 2% gross domestic product. Some studies in the U.S. suggest a potential reduction in gross domestic products of about 1%, but this would be offset by growth in other plant-based markets. Vegetarian food requires less consumption of plants by not having to feed any animal to be subsequently consumed by people. This is translated into no need to build farm animals and feed them, no need to kill animals and no need to use animal products. Altogether, vegetarianism involves a series of effects which reduce overspending of resources and involvement of the soil if this must be cultivated intensively to feed livestock. If we feed exclusively on plant foods, we do not require the existence of farm animals. Therefore, as we should not feed them to be grown, and to be consumed, all these foods that are used for feeding the animals can be devoted directly to the diet of people. Thus, we will also avoid a massive consumption of plants and a massive land plowing for seedling and planting. As a whole, we will not need to exploit the soil so much. In addition, a lower crop production will be able to nurture many more people while hurting the environment and nature with unnecessary mass cultivation will not be so necessary. It is also considered that to obtain a kilo of meat, we have to feed an animal with an average fodder 15 times its weight. Feeding stuffs are usually prepared with cereals, grains, and legumes, such as soybeans. If we use this amount of food for people's nutrition, we will save 14 kilograms an amount which is wasted when we feed animals for human consumption. We also have to keep in mind that a kilo of soya has an approximate amount of protein of about 350 grams, while a kilo of beef has the approximate amount of 200 grams. The amount of protein that soybean provides us is higher. In fact, it is almost twice. In addition, if we take into account the 14 kilograms of difference, which I used to form a kilo of meat, it is untenable to defense animal fattening for food. With a diet based on plant foods, we would get the following benefits. Number one, more food. Number two, there will not be any need to raise animals to slaughter them later. A lot more people could be nourished without wasting so many resources and there will be less need for massive crop production. 
And number three, more water for the animals is required than for the harvest to be fruitful. Water is needed for both for the animals to drink and to clean the offal from slaughterhouses and to maintain farm hygiene. One of the scariest parts of going vegan slash vegetarian is that it might be expensive, but that simply isn't the case. If you pack your cart full of processed mock meats and cheese every trip to the grocery store, you probably won't be saving any money. But going vegan doesn't have to mean going broke. So what are the practical ways to eat a plant-based diet without breaking the bank? Number one, get into gardening. Unless you have a serious green thumb, it's not realistic to rely on a home garden for all your produce, especially for those who reside in winter seasons. But if you grow from seed or find deals on seedlings and plants, you can certainly offset the cost of store-bought produce. A herb garden will absolutely save you money. You can start small by planting in pots. Number two, buy in bulk. Buying in bulk is far cheaper than buying foods in packages. From simple staples such as rice and beans to specialty ingredients such as nutritional yeast, textured vegetable protein, spices, and more, buying in bulk is one of the single biggest money savers in the supermarkets. Plus, it's better for the environment too. Number three, buy local and in season. We're now almost hardwired to believe that all produce grows year round. However, the truth is that items that are shipped in from places around the world where they are in season or are grown in specialty greenhouses can be costly. Local growers have seasonal produce in abundance and that produce is far cheaper than produce that has to be shipped from halfway around the world. In addition, there's a reason for every season. Fruits and vegetables are more flavorful and more nutrient dense when grown and consumed in their rightful seasons. I'm sure we all have experience eating a fruit slash vegetable out of season and the taste is not the same. By practicing these tips, you will make a positive impact on the environment and the economy. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening and I hope that you have learned something.